Hey, this is Dan Nickerson, and this is an overview video of WordPress. I wanted to do a, a video for my customers that's it's going kind to of be a really fast paced video. There's not a lot of fluff. I'm just going to tell you briefly what WordPress is. I'm going to show you how to install WordPress via cPanel. I'm going to show you how to set up a theme with WordPress and also set up all the basic core functions of WordPress and how it works. And I think I can do it all under 10 minutes. So we're going to go fast. There's not a lot of fluff. Uh, you can pause the video at any time if you want, obviously, and or watch it again. So we're on WordPress.org. There are two WordPresses. is WordPress.com and WordPress.org. If you have your own domain name and want to do business online, you want WordPress.org, and that's all we're going to focus on. So WordPress has themes, plugins, mobile support, tons of support, tons of tutorials, all kinds of things that are in here. I'm not going to get into that now, but just know that WordPress is the most popular website building platform on the web. There's many free resources. There's also paid resources. So essentially, there are free versions of WordPress themes and plugins, and there are paid versions of WordPress themes and plugins. All depends on what you want to do, what you want your site to do, and so forth. So to install WordPress, most we're going to focus mostly on accounts that have cPanel right now. Most web hosts have one-click WordPress installers. If you don't have a one-click WordPress installer, you can download WordPress from here and install it via the back end of another web hosting account. But I recommend you choose a web host that has one-click installers. My, my recommended web host is SiteGround, and so you'll see a link on this for SiteGround, but I just go to bestseohosting.com. That's where I'm going to do the demo for this, but if you want great web hosting, I recommend SiteGround. Okay, so I am logged into a cPanel account of my SiteGround uh, server right now. So I'm on bestseohosting.com. This is actually the domain of it, so you can see there's nothing here. So in order to install WordPress, I need to, to load up the WordPress installer. Now some cPanels will have a WordPress button right here. You can just scroll down here and look for WordPress and all these icons and you'll find it. But for the most part, it's usually under a software installer. So mine's under Softaculous. So you click on Softaculous and you click on WordPress and you click on install. And it's going to essentially give you these different options. So you can choose a protocol. So if you already know your site is has SSL, you can choose SSL. If it's just that, or www, or SSL and www. I'm just going to leave it the generic one right now. It's easy to change at a later time. This is where you can choose the domain. So if you have a host with multiple add-on domains, you can choose that domain here. So if you, you're hosting multiple domains on one account, you can choose the domain here. This is the directory that you want to put it in. So I'm just going to put it in the root directory, so I'm going to leave this blank. However, if you want to put it into the DIR or a blog directory or just do a test install, which I do recommend if you want to play around with WordPress, just create a test install and play around with it there. But I'll leave this blank. This is the site name and description. Once again, you can change this later on the back end of the website. I'm just going to leave it for right now. This is the admin username and password. WordPress doesn't use the word the, the username admin anymore. They want you to have a secure one. So you can change this to anything you want, but I recommend you don't make it a simple to guess word. This is the password. Uh, this is the email address. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the um, this into Notepad right now just so I have it. So let me just load up. I use little sticky notes with, uh, with Windows here to, uh, to save stuff that I can access later. And just if anyone's watching this video that has bad intentions, I will be changing this or removing this install after the video. So don't try to log in with this admin username. It'll be long gone. Then you scroll down a little further. If you want, you can install this plugin. It's a little security prevention, but just you can just leave it alone for now. There's advanced options as well, the type of database and the structure and so forth. Uh, once again, I'll change this after the video, but you don't have to mess with this right now. Now I'm going to click on install. It's installing WordPress. It says it may take three or four minutes. It typically takes 30 seconds or less. It's now been installed. This gives you the links. You might want to copy this down if you're new to WordPress. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to copy this into my little sticky note here. So now I have the URL, uh, login URL, and I have the username and the password. Okay. So now I can open the click on this. It opens in a new tab and it logs me right in automatically to WordPress because it was already logged in from the back end. And if I reload the best SEO hosting site, and you'll see here's the full blog. So this is the 2017 theme. It comes with WordPress by default. You're going to see that it has a blog post. This is for a site ground hosting and stuff. It's already built in. Your web host might have its own kind of pre-done thing and so forth. Now, 
I am most well known for having created the Socrates WordPress theme. So I'm going to install the Socrates theme here so you can see what it's like to install a premium theme on the back end. Now to install a premium theme on the back end, I'm going to click on Appearance, Add New, Upload, Choose File, and I can have my theme right here. So I basically had three plugins here that I have on the back end. I have the Socrates zip file. I'm going to install that. And I'm going to activate that. And to install a plugin, I click on Plugins, Add New, Upload, Choose File. This is the Socrates plugin. And I add that. So I've now added the Socrates plugin and the Socrates theme. I can just click on Update here if I want to here. Okay, and the next thing I want to install is a plugin called WP Fresh Start, which I recommend for new sites or if you install a lot of blogs. What this, what this plugin does is it helps you set up WordPress faster. So I'll click on this and I've got that. And now I can go into WP Fresh Start. I gotta enter in my key here. One second. Okay, so I validate it now. So what this does, it lets you create content automatically. So I'm gonna configure some content here. I can change my site title if I want to, to bestseohosting.com. You know, your source for hosting. Save changes. I can go to post pages and I can delete all the current ones that are in there. I can create an about, a contact page, and I'm gonna click save there. Legal pages, I can add some legal pages here. Save changes, category tags, I'll leave that blank. Sample content, this actually just helps you see what a site looks like. Comments, it's fine, I'll leave all that stuff there. And I'm gonna click on save changes. Now let me go back to the site. Now with WordPress, you can go up here to the upper right and I can reload this. And now I have, this is the Socrates default layout. I have the title, your source for hosting. I have some uh, paragraph posts, image posts, and so forth. But this is my complete website right now. So the only thing I have to do is give you like an overview more of WordPress now to show you how it works in the back end. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to WordPress dashboard. This is the WordPress dashboard, okay? So right off the bat, they give you some basics, beginner stuff. It shows you how to write your first blog post, add an about page, view your site, manage widgets, turn comments. You can do all this stuff. Once you've read this, you can dismiss this, right? This is basically a, an, a dashboard that you can control and drag and drop. And it shows all kinds of different things, WordPress events in your area. Now, if you have updates to WordPress, like software updates, they'll usually show right in here. It says I have the latest version of WordPress. Next, we have posts. Now posts are typically where you place article content. So you use posts for article content and blog posts. You use pages for static things like about, privacy, contact, those kind of things, right? So most people use posts for content. There are all kinds of different things, ways to learn WordPress as far as SEO, whether you wanna use pages or posts, but for now the standard way to use WordPress is articles go as posts, static content that doesn't get changed a lot goes as pages. To add a new post, you simply click on Add New. You can enter a post title. You can just start typing. This is my post, right? Now, there's sample text here. So if I want to put in 100 words with Fresh Start, I can do that, and there's some content. Actually, my Socrates plugin has that as well. Uh, once again, you can play around with this stuff. You can delete it. But essentially, you make a post title. Post title is how to do this, right? And then this is how you do this. If you want to add an image, you can click on Add Media, and you can upload images and add them to your, your site. And then this is different formats that are available. This is different categories. So if you have categories, you can type in a category, like News, for example, or General, right? And you pick on that, it gets assigned to a category. There are tags, you can do tags. Once again, this is a quick overview. There are a gazillion tutorials on WordPress. Next is the Media tab. This is where all your media files are located. So you can add images here or videos if you want or audio if you want. Next is pages. This shows you all the pages. Once again, there are default pages that are created. So I click on here, you see disclaimer. Here's the disclaimer page that was automatically created using WP Fresh Start. And then we have comments. This is where you manage your comments. So if someone leaves a comment on your blog, you can add it there. Appearance is where you control the design of the website. So there's 
Socrates here. You can customize Socrates here. Once again, I have tutorials on Socrates as well. But this is all the different things you can do to control the look and feel of the website. So if I want to change the, the header background, for example, I can go in here and I can just change the header background to blue. And now I have a blue header, right? So you can do that on for all the different design elements of the website. Next, we have widgets. Widgets are what control in the sidebar, right? So widgets, essentially, you have things like archives, calendar, categories, HTML, custom menus, pages, and so forth. All of these things can be dragged and dropped. I want to add a little search box, for example. I can just drag this to my right sidebar, and there's the search box. Simple as that. So once again, there's tons of tutorials on widgets as well. Menus is where you control the primary navigation. So if I type in primary, I should say you control all of the navigation. I'm trying to get this video done quickly, as I said I was going to do. You can just click on here and add stuff to the menu, assign it to the primary nav bar. And once I do that, you will see that the menu now appears here. That's how that works. And then we have plugins. So plugins are essentially things that let you add in all kinds of different things. Here's the most popular plugins, right? Contact Form 7, Yoast SEO. There's a gazillion plugins right here. Uh, so that's when you install plugins and add them. Editor is an advanced function. Don't worry about it. If you have users, this is where all your users are managed. So you can add people with different levels of access to your site if you want. Tools is for importing and exporting. So if you want to export content from one site, import it into another site, you can do that. So say you built uh, a thousand posts on some other site, you want to merge them to another site, you can export them from that site and import them to this site. Settings is one of the biggest things you need to set up with WordPress initially. This just gives you all of the default settings, whether it's the time zone, the date format, right? It's the name of the site, the, the path of the site, the email address of the site. Writing essentially is for posting via different methods like via email or via other services. This is a ping service. Just leave this stuff blank if you don't know what it is. Uh, reading lets you show what you want to show on the main page, whether you want front posts or a static page. So if I take the front, if I make the, the front page a uh, just the about page, for example, I can click on save changes. Now when I'm back here and I go to the home page, it's about us. See, I'm at the best SEO hosting, and that's about us. So I'm going back here. This lets you show how many posts you want to show on the main page. Tens a lot, you might want to put it to five. If you have a feed, so you're giving out RSS feeds, you can use summary or full text. I recommend summary. If you're working on your site, you don't want anyone to see it yet, or you don't want to get indexed in Google yet, you click on Discourage, Save Changes, and no one, the search engines will not find the site once you do that. And then make sure once you're ready to go live, you change that back. Discussion is where you manage com comments. You, you know, most part, you just leave that alone. Media is how you manage different thumbnail sizes and so forth. Permalinks are one of the most important things from an SEO standpoint. Typically, people use post names. So the set is the default is for like the day and name, but you might want to just make it post name. That's what most people do. The reason for that is from an SEO standpoint, the least number of directories you have, the better. So typically, the first level directory is going to rank better than a, than a third level directory, if that makes sense. So most people stick with this post name. Unless you really think you're going to be blogging on a daily or weekly basis forever, uh, then you might want to organize by date, but otherwise just use post name. You can leave this blank as well. And that's essentially the quick rapid fire overview of WordPress, what it is, how to install it via cPanel, how to add a theme, how to add a plugin, and a little background on the back end. Hope this is helpful. Thanks.